everyone and welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, I'm Christy. I'm a witch. If you're not new here, thank you for coming back. Today we're finally going to jump into some spells. Finally, I know. About time, Christy. So today we're gonna do some candle magic. Candle magic is, I think, great for beginners because it's very easy to do, but it's also very effective. What I love about it is it's super easy and it's super flexible. You can do candle magic spells for all sorts of different things, whether you're banishing things, bringing things, you can use it for all of them. So candle magic uses the element of fire, which is the element of transformation. The fire element has a lot of energy and a lot of passion behind it, which makes it great for spell work. This is going to be kind of a mini series because I'm going to break this down into two parts. So in this video, we're going to cover uh, preparing a spell candle and how to prepare a spell candle. And in the next video, we will talk about what to do while you're using it. So what color candle should you use? That depends on what type of spell you're doing. Um, black is great for banishing spells, for protection spells, for sending things away from you. Um, if you want to draw in uh, love, you could do pink or maybe red. Or if you're like me and you're broke and you don't want to run out and buy a bunch of different colored candles, white is the all purpose of spell work. <laughs> it is. If you don't have any of these other things, you can use a white candle and that's just fine. You can get them from the dollar store, um, Amazon. It doesn't have to be a spell candle like this. Um, it could be a taper candle, it could be a 70 candle, it could be a tea light, um, but these are kind of the standard. Um, because they, of their burn time, it's sort of a single use and you don't have to return to the spell. Um, and you just wait for it to burn down and then your spell's done. So uh, these, they're called chime candles or spell candles. So once you have your candle, the first thing you wanna do is cleanse it. You might be thinking, but it's brand new. Yeah, but it was around like manufacturers and people who created it, the people who boxed it, the people who shipped it to wherever it was, whether it's to your door or to the store. And people might have picked it up, people might have, you know, moved it around and it could have excess energy that you just don't want. So do whatever your preferred cleansing method is. Uh, some people like to, you know, smoke cleanse it. Some people like to do a whole ritual. Sometimes when I don't have a lot of time, I'm not super proud of this, but I will do the knocking method, which I just kind of knock the energy out of it. Um, you could also ring bells over it, to kind of just get the stagnant like energy out of it. Just shake it out. Once your candle is cleansed, you can carve into it if you'd like. You can take just like a toothpick or carving tools, whatever. Um, you can carve symbols or words. For example, if you wanted to bring in happiness, you could put a smiley face on it. You could put a rune on it you could just write happy on it if you want or joy or happiness whatever you'd like you can carve into it to further define what it is that you would like to bring to you or send away depending the next thing that you will do is you will anoint this with an oil now you don't have to run out and buy a fancy type of oil i have one that i bought from a local witchcraft supply shop but you can also just use like olive oil or uh, sunflower oil. You can pretty much use what you have on hand. So you'll dress your candle with your oil and it's important on how you anoint. What is important here is how you anoint the candle. Uh, some people like to either go out from the center or in from this to the center. Um, so out for away and in for drawing things to you. I personally like to think of the wick um, as the, the flame as myself. So what I like to do is, let's say I want to draw happiness toward me, I will take my oil, I will like flip it over on my fingers, just get a little bit kind of rubbing around, and then I will aim the wick at me. So if I want to draw something to me, I will pull that oil towards me and towards the wick and I will just dress it 
so that I am bringing, I am drawing something to me. If you are sending something away from you, you will do the same thing. You'll hold your candle with the wick facing you and then you will pull it away. All right, you have one oily candle. What do you do with it? The next thing is you would sprinkle it with uh, your herbs that have the magical attributes of the intention that you want. Don't think that you have to choose a bunch of them, everyone. You can choose one. If you've got basil in your cupboard and you're doing a spell that aligns with a magical attribute of basil, you can use that and just that. But if you'd like, you can go out and find uh, other types of herbs or flowers or what have you that you can dress it with, that you can uh, sprinkle over it for your intention. Uh, sometimes I just like to use whatever I have uh, and sometimes that's just a single herb or two herbs. Um, sometimes I like to go out of my way. I like to put a lot of energy into finding it or harvesting it if it's in my garden um, and making my own like herb mixture. Crumble it up and you will either roll your candle in it or sprinkle it over and it will stick to the oil. Don't worry if it doesn't all stay stuck to it. The intention's there. The smaller chunks that you have, um, the more dust-like it is, the better it will stick to your candle. And you don't really want to have like big chunks of stuff stuck to it because you're working with fire and fire catches things on fire. So of course, always practice fire safety, put it on some sort of fire safe dish or surface, something that you don't really mind if it gets wax on. And if you have larger chunks, just keep an eye on it. Make sure nothing is hanging over it because the fire could burn stuff up. Don't burn your house down. Please don't burn your house down. That's pretty much it. That's how you dress a spell candle. I will whip together another video to talk about what to do when your spell candle is dressed. If it's already out, it will be in the description box or tagged or something of that nature. If you found this video informative or if you got a chuckle out of it even once, like this video so I know that I'm doing something right. If you wanna see more of me or my dogs or um, witchcrafty things, subscribe. I am so happy there's so many of you guys. I can't even, I can't even believe there's so many of you. Thank you for subscribing to me. Um, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.